Hi guys, today we're going to go over a common programming question which is asked in many interviews. This programming question is called FizzBuzz and it reads as follows. Write a short program that prints each number from 1 to 100 on a new line. For each multiple of 3, print Fizz instead of the number. For each multiple of 5, print Buzz instead of the number. And for numbers which are multiples of both 3 and 5, print fizz buzz instead of the number. So essentially what we're required to do is we're required to input our integer, which falls within this range. And if that is a multiple of three, we, we print out this string called fizz. If it's a multiple of five, then we print out buzz, the string. And if it's both three and five multiple, then we need to print out fizzbuzz instead of the number. Firstly, let's go over um, common mistakes that programmers make when trying to do this question. So what they will usually do is that they'll try and try and execute these in order. So first they check for uh, whether it's a multiple of three, then five, then three and five. And this usually will not lead to the correct answer as then it will cause the program to print fizz, buzz, and fizz, buzz, like all three of the strings. Because um, the inputted value is a multiple of three and five, and it's going to be here as well. So what we need to do is that we need to first write a conditional statement which sorts this out, which checks if it's both three and five's multiple. And if it's not, then we know that it's just going to be a singular multiple. Okay, so if we move on to here, we're going to be doing this in Pascal. But essentially, the the logic is the same for all languages. So firstly, you're going to be required to have your input. So it's ju I just set n as my integer. And then um, you input this, you input n, and then you need to check... So you use a conditional statement to check if it is a multiple of 3 and 5. So it's if n mod 3 is equal to 0. So what the mod function does is that it provides the remainder of when n is divided by 3. So if the remainder is 0, that means that 3 is a multiple of n. So this is a good check. Now what we can do is we can use the and if n mod... 5 is also equal to 0. Again, this checks if it's a um, multiple of 5. Then you need to then begin the program. So what you do is that you begin, then you'd print your fizzbuzz. And then and then you need to exit your program as this is the only thing that you want from your from your program otherwise the program will continue and it'll check for the other conditional statements as well so then you can end this then what you can do is you can go if n mod 3 only um sorry equals to zero okay there we go then you can begin your you can begin to display just fizz and then you can exit the program as well thirdly you, you need to check if it's divisible by five so if it is, it means that 5 is a uh, multiple of that number. So then you display buzz. And then you'd exit the program as well. And this is essentially what you need to do down to the bare minimum. It's a very simple program. If you exclude the spacing, it takes about um, it takes less than 15 lines 
So very simple, very short, and a very sweet program. And this is a very common question which is asked in many programming interviews, as I stated before. So it would be in your best interest to learn it or just learn like how to do questions that are similar to this because it tests like your your programming capabilities as you can see that it compiled successfully and now if we run it so if we enter 45 it would say fizzbuzz as um, it would say fizzbuzz as 45 is divisible by 3 and 5 but yet if we enter um, uh, if we enter like uh, 10 which is not divisible by 3 but it is divisible by 5 you get buzz which is just correct and uh, if you enter 9 it will say fizz and I'm going to include links in the description which um, which will lead to at coder and hacker rank where you can check where you can first make an account then you can check if your program works because what it does is that it will feed many test cases into the program and then you can check if, if your um, if your program works for various test scenarios so yeah thank you guys for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions or any like programs that you're struggling with please let me know uh, thank you and I will see you again